Forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of new world order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator, Ed Opperman, and this portion of the show is brought to you by EmailRevealer.com. Go to EmailRevealer.com, get a copy of my book, How to Become a Successful Private Investigator, but also to all kinds of uh, investigations, email tracing. Uh, you need to locate someone from a screen name or an email address, cyber-stalking investigations, uh, internet defamation cases. As a matter of fact, if you were a fan of Observations of a Misfit back in 2000, you, you probably would have needed my help back in those days. You could have found me, but today we have with us... Um, Loretta Dillon, she's author of two books. One is uh, Stone Cold Guilty, uh, The People versus Scott Lee Peterson, and a brand new one just came out is uh, Still Stone Cold Guilty. Uh, so, Loretta, you there? I am. I, am. I do need your help. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. Well, that's, how I, that's pretty much how I learned how to do this kind of stuff because I was being stalked sure. myself on another we, situation. Uh, sure. We had to be, uh, we had to be really... Um, thick-skinned back in the day, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and I guess, too, I guess we were kind of innocent. We didn't realize um, how dangerous all this kind of stuff was. You don't know who's on the other end, you know? And uh, some people are very obsessive and um, insane. Yeah, they have a lot of time on their hands. Yeah, and, and crazy, too, though, you know? Now, anyway, uh, so now well, Garagos gets involved, and uh, then they make – now, he was involved before the arrest or after the arrest? Uh, no, he was not involved until after the arrest, um, because McAllister was at first his attorney. This was a guy who was in Modesto, and um, I think he had, uh, you know, con con counseled Peterson at the, you know, at the hearing, at the, at his indictment, you know, and then, um, then he uh, bailed out for whatever reason, whether it was his caseload or I think more because. McAllister had never tried a capital murder case. He had no experience with it. So I think Garrigus had had at least maybe one or two. But I mean, Garrigus had some celebrity clients back then. He you know he defended uh, Winona Ryder um, badly, and he defended uh, Robert Downey Jr. And he uh, later on, not not far off, got involved with Michael Jackson's case. He was on the original team. With Brahmin, or that guy, that guy that eventually stayed with Jackson when you know when Michael Jackson was going through that child molesting case. Yeah. So he was, you know, he was kind of a high, so-called high-profile celebrity lawyer back back then, I, you know, and, and remained so. But um, honestly, I don't know. I I, I got to figure it came from the Petersons. Yeah, he was involved in that Webster Hole. Uh, uh, wasn't it Webster Hole? With that Whitewater investigation. He was uh, representing someone in that case too. And he... Oh, Susan McDougal. Susan McDougal. That's what it was. Yeah, right. that's, that's where we oh first gosh. heard of that. Guy. I know. Yeah, it's a million right. years ago. Yeah. So then, now do we know how much he got paid? A million dollars? You think? Well, you know, that's what they said. So who knows? Probably more. Probably yeah. more. It would have to be. Yeah. Now, uh, what was the defense? The defense was somebody else did it. You know, pretty much that they were they were showing trying to show that. The, the prosecution had the wrong guy. And, you know, they didn't have to prove someone else did it, but they had to create enough reasonable doubt that Peterson did it. And they were, you know, he really failed at that. I think he would have done a better job had he not made such a big media circus out of it. But, you mm -hmm. know, he would grandstand. He would, he would talk about how his client was stone cold innocent, how he was going to find the killers, you know, which was reminiscent of OJ. And he was recorded doing all that stuff, which, by the way, shows up in the appeal and in the habeas that they just filed in, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Peterson's lawyer filed a habeas, which, you know, to get him out. 
And that was included in there, that his defense was in was incompetent. And actually, the prosecution defended Garrigus in their response to the habeas by saying that he, he you know, did reasonable expectations for his job. And I, I disagree. I do think Garrigus was incompetent. I really do. Well, no, yeah, because I think the defense was somewhere along the lines of, uh, well, yeah, he's a cad, he's a cheater, he's a scoundrel, you know, all these bizarre phrases from the 1940s, like he's Cary Grant or something, you know, and, uh, but he was, he's not a murderer, there's no proof he's a murderer, but actually there was quite a bit of proof he was a murderer, there was these boat, you know, like you said, the fishing license, you know, the, 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 the scene out there at the, the location where the body was found, there was all this evidence, there was a ton of evidence right, that and, he was a murderer. And the, the computer search, I mean, a lot of times, um you know, the media would make it sound like Garrigus was dropping all these bombshells. It seemed like every Thursday, yeah. for whatever reason, uh, they would announce that Garrigus dropped this bombshell by, you know, by showing maybe some police, you know, some police misconduct or the police didn't follow up on something or the concrete didn't match or, or you know, all these things that really were not bombshells. And ultimately the media to prolong, I think, maybe viewership and to prolong the, you know, the, the distraction that the Peterson case was providing during the Iraq war, right? Uh, that was a nice distraction. Let's just, you know, show these people some sparkly objects and maybe they won't pay very much attention to what's going on in the government. And uh, so they were uh, talking about Garrigus like he was this F. Lee Bailey or something, like he was some great lawyer. And I would comment, what trial are you watching? <laughs> you know, because you're not watching the trial that's really going on here. Um, they produced the computer searches that Peterson had prior to, you know, the murder. And then how he had looked for fishing spots, deep water spots, all over within, say, an hour of Modesto. He had any number of places he could have gone closer to his house than Berkeley. But I, I think the reason he picked Berkeley was because he was familiar with it. And that's kind of how people are. You know, they go where they're comfortable. Didn't he have trouble launching the boat as well? Well, supposedly, that's what Garrigus said. Garrigus said there were people there who were making fun of him because he was backing that boat out, you know, on a trailer and not getting it straight. But, I mean, that can happen to anybody. I mean, if you're in a boater, you know what that looks like. But, uh they could never produce those witnesses. Garrigus okay. never called those guys. Garrigus never called anybody who may or may not have seen him at the marina. There was no question that he was at the marina. He could have just driven up there and gotten a launch ticket for all we know. You know, he might not have even ever launched the boat. There was no proof he was ever in, in the water that day. But I think he went the night before. And I think what he did the day of Christmas Eve was he left the house, went to the warehouse, was stewing about, worrying about, he lost a tarp at the, at the you know, we, we think he lost one of the tarps that he was using because there were dogs that were on boat searches that sniffed out these, you know, cadaver dogs that sniffed out this tarp. And uh, the underwater investigation it uncovered a lot of stuff that Peterson was probably worried about, which is why he went back on the 24th. When he went back, he just putted around, launched the boat, looked around for the tarp, made sure nothing, you know, maybe he just made sure nothing was, was had, you know, resurfaced, and then he went home. He didn't sp spend more than an hour or an hour and a half in the water. Now, now you're saying you think he went back because he there was a tarp that he lost, and then he went back looking for it? Yes. And that, we know that. Or just to look to make sure nothing came up. He was worried. Yeah. And we know that because dogs were hitting on a tarp over there? That and because the underwater investigation that took place with the side scan sonar, which was not admitted at trial, but which was an entire investigation that took place during the month of March, uncovered or they did they spotted Lacey in the water before before the storm, and they couldn't get to her. They went down there, they oh. dived or dove, whatever that word is for when you scuba dive. They went down there looking for her twice and had such bad weather that they couldn't find her. But Gene Ralston sent me an entire report on the underwater investigation, which I published for free on my blog toward the end of the trial and also put it in my book in chapter chapter 13, where we went, he went through the entire underwater investigation and show me where he, where he found her. And he, they found an object in the water 
with a side scan sonar that looked like a cigar, you know, the shape of a cigar, and it had spaghetti-like material floating above it. It was covered in crabs, unfortunately. It had, like, material that was floating above the water, I mean, above the body, like, in you know, that was white, and it was torn up, but it was still intact enough to be seen as the size and shape and, uh, you know, of a, of a body. And um, then later on when they, you know, they went to, to go down there, they went to dive, the water was, you know, that bay is very, very cloudy, very bad water conditions. They couldn't get down there. They, they had failed in two attempts to recover that body. And then afterward, they just started looking for the anchors because it had left a trail. The, the dragging of the body with one of the anchors had actually left a trail that looked like it could be made by a sailboat keel or something. And it left a long line in the silt that they saw. And they were trying at that point, after the body resurfaced, they went back and looked for the anchors. Now this was they a, didn't find this, they, this, Actually, they did find one, but you know, that's, none of that went to trial. Wait, now this is a, a police divers or a private company? This was both the Stanislaus County Police, okay, or Stan, you know, Modesto Police were embedded with Gene Ralston's company that did the, science, the side scan sonar right. search for Lacey. Yeah, at the time, my, my partner was a NYPD Harbor Aviation, so he was feeding me all this information about the dive as well. And, and you know, it, it, like, a lot of these uh, local, like even the, the New York Fire Department, you know, their dive team, it, it's not, they're, they're not the greatest guys in the world. You know, like, a lot of police departments don't have really uh, sophisticated dive teams that, that even know how to, are certified on the side scan sonar, and the, especially back in those days. That was very unusual. Yeah, to, yeah it, it was very uncommon. Uh, to have that. Yeah, and, and the, the the team leader, I don't remember his name now, but I could, you know, again, we can look it up, but the team leader of the dive team for Modesto, or, or it wasn't even the dive team, but the, the investigative team, they actually threw back, threw back an anchor that they found. They oh, actually really? threw it back in the water. And I'm kind of surprised that Mark Garrigus didn't present that in trial, because it would have been a way for him to say, look how incompetent these guys are. But he didn't want... He did not want to approach that investigation. He never talked about it. He would talk around it. He had Cloward on the stand, and he talked to him about what the searches were doing and how the. And then he completely, you know, basically didn't even approach those searches that were done by Gene Ralston. They didn't even admit him at trial. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason the prosecution didn't admit the admitted at trial was because a they didn't recover the body, and b because they didn't want to present a two-trip theory. It was too confusing. But I believe he made two trips. How long is the drive from his house to that, uh, that bay? 90 minutes. 90 minutes, okay. Now, uh, what other evidence was there that wasn't admitted at trial? Well, the, all the dog evidence, without, with one exception. They, did find, they only admitted one part of the entire, you know how they do a 409 evidence, you know, uh, um, hearing for yeah. all kinds of evidence. They did that for the GPS. They did that for the surveillance, for the wiretapping, for the dog. Now, there were several different kinds of dogs that worked on the Peterson case. There were cadaver dogs, there were tracking dogs, and there were water dogs. So the three different kinds of dogs had uncovered different things. The water dog smelled the tarp, and that was never admitted because they didn't find the tarp. And you always have to have some kind of corroborating evidence to support the dog yeah. in order to admit it in court, which I didn't know, but I, I know all kinds of things now that I didn't know before. Um, the second kind of dog that they had was a cadaver dog, and a cadaver dog sniffed and pointed, or you know how they they um, point out cadaver smell. He This dog pointed out a cadaver smell in Peterson's like shed where he kept the 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 tarp for the boat one of the tarps the, the boat cover which by the way he had doused with gasoline hmm. when it was in there so he douses this boat cover with gasoline he has and yet the cadaver dog a, a cadaver dog alerted to something in his in his you know shed so but that had no other evidence to support it so that got thrown out and then they had various tracking dogs now one dog tracked Lacey down the street 
and then stopped. So it was like they were trying to find out if she had taken the dog for a walk that morning, like he claimed. So if she